like to call the meeting to order. It's uh, 5.03. Let's start with roll call. Commissioners present. I'm Don Griffin. Eric Sandweiss. Uh, David Walter. Nicholas Capitas. Cindy Kidarney. Okay. Um, staff present. Doris Sam's hand director. Jeff Underwood, treasurer, controller. Okay. Alex Crowley, uh, economic sustainable development. Okay. Larry Allen, legal. Okay. All right. Alex, why are you dressed like Woody? Alex, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I, uh, thank you for that. Yes, I appreciate it. <laughs> Come on, if we're not laughing at that. Come on. <laughs> I'm modeling good behavior. <laughs> uh, all right. Is there a, is there a, can we have a reading of the minutes? Are you there? I'd like to approve, I mean, re, is, is there a motion to approve the minutes for May the 18th, uh, 2020? This is David Walter. I'll make a motion and we approve the minutes. This is Nick Capus. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Don Griffin, aye. Aye. Says aye. Nick Capus says aye. Nick Capus says aye. Okay, that's all. None opposed. The motion carries. Examination of claims. Is there a motion to approve the claims register for May the 29th, 2020? So moved. That was Eric Sandler. Second. second. All in favor? I'm Don Griffin. Yes. David Walters says yes. Cindy Canarney, yes. Nicholas Capus, yes. Sam Royce, aye. Okay. Uh, no opposed, so the motion carries. Examination of payroll registers. Is there a motion to approve the payroll registers for May the 22nd, 2020? David Walter makes a motion, motion to accept those. motion to approve those. the payroll registers. Okay, we have one approved. Uh, let's go with Cindy and David. Was David, do you want a second? I'll second that motion. David. Okay. Uh, all in favor, I approve. Don Griffin. Sandweiss, I approve. David Walter approves. Nick Capas approves. Cindy Canarney approves. Okay. None opposed, so the motion carries. Uh, report of officers and committees. Is there a director's report? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Here I am. Um, Hi. <laughs> I wanted to report to everyone. Uh, Alex's outfit is throwing me off, but <laughs> that um, we received uh, today was the closing date for our applications at our CDBG COVID-19 funding. We received 12 applications. We'll be reviewing those applications this week and meeting with our committee next week to review them. Um, the recommended allocations will be coming to the Redevelopment Commission for approval on June 15th. Are there any questions? Nope. I don't, well, I don't know. Are there folks? Anybody? Guess okay, not. Thank you. Okay. That's the end thank of my you. report. Uh, is there a legal report? Uh, none at this time, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, folks? Are we good? I will just note, just briefly, sorry, I guess I, one thing is just please note that we have an executive session immediately following the business of the regular meeting. Uh, you can stay on the Zoom call, and it will be limited to commissioners because we will be discussing a potential property transaction. Okay. Hey, Larry, you're breaking up sometime. That is thanks to City Hall Internet. Okay. All right. All right. I, I don't think anybody heard the last part of that, Larry, where you said we limited the two commissioners only because. Uh, because it's uh, only it's going to involve a potential real property transaction. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, is there a CTP update report? Oh, no, is there a treasurer's update report, for, first of all? Uh, no, only to say that uh, I'm hoping by the next meeting we'll be able to update you on uh, the first six months uh, property tax payments to see where we stand on uh, TIF revenues. So that'll be interesting. So uh, we'll have that for you. And um, since Alex is on the call, I, I won't do anything with the, uh, the garages. I'll leave that up to him. Okay. Um, is there a CTP update report? And will that include garages? I can, yes, I can include garages. This is Woody Cowboy. Um, I wanted to, uh, so before I get to the garages, I, I did want to, um, we, we got a request from uh, the mill and they were wondering if, and I'm gonna try to maybe share my screen. I don't know if I have the ability to do that, but they, wa they wanted to uh, see if they can leverage um, some of the green area outside of the mill as a way to uh, s sort of do safe, uh, socially distanced uh, kind of outdoor, you know, areas for themselves uh, dur during the, the, you know. Pandemic. So they sent a picture of an example of what it looks like. You may have seen this in other cities, but let me see if I can share my screen. Give me one second. Um, and let me see here. Can you, can you, everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So basically what this is, uh, this is not in, in Bloomington, but, the, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way to get people outside uh, enjoying a park or something like that. And, uh, but it, it has circles drawn on the grass where, you know, so the circles are separated from each other. Um, so anyway, that the, the request was whether we would be open to allowing this to happen, even facilitating it in the green area um, outside of the mill. And, um, you know, I think as, as long as it's uh, deemed to be healthy, and we'll double check this before we would implement it, um, because it's RDC owned land, we wanted to make sure that you uh, were aware of this and, and, and we're giving, we're able to give your approval. And then we will, as a follow up, we would, um, uh, you know, double check, make sure that it's kosher from a health perspective and, and, um, and then uh, give the approval. So any questions about that? So Larry, do we need a kind of formal approval on this? Well, let me just state my opinion on this. It's silliness taken to extreme. Outside the mill is public area and anybody in the public can be anywhere they wish. And if they're not going to practice social distancing, then who are we to say, oh, you got to stay within these circles. You know, just going downtown through the courthouse square the other evening, there were probably about 60 people out there around the Civil War monument. Now, how in the world they can do any social distancing is not going to happen. I think it's really back on to the individual to realize that they have a, a right and responsibility to do social distancing, to wear a mask, and to be conscious of others' needs. It's just like the other day when I went into a building supply and material place, about half the people in there were not wearing masks. And I said, well, I'm not coming back to this business. I'll go to the other business where they require and we'll sell you masks when you come in. And that's only because I have a compromised immune system. I really cannot be around people who are coughing and hacking. So again, this is silliness. You're gonna spray paint these things, deface the lawn, forget it. It's public space. Let people take their own personal responsibility. And I'll get off my soapbox. Well, any other questions or suggestions? So, so we have to give them uh, permission to do this, or right now they their their uh, their their footprint, right? The mills jurisdiction ends on the other side of Madison, right? So they've got the little plaza area, their, their actual lot, um, you know, is, is surrounding the, the mill itself. So anything that happens in the, in the grassy area um, is really an RDC um, owned 
lot. And so we want to make sure that you would be okay, um, you know, essentially temporarily giving them access to a, a portion of the land that doesn't really come with their uh, lease, if you will. So there's, um, so I think I think we're just kind of following process here to make sure that you you all are okay with that. And David, I understand what you're saying. I think I think the the really the only benefit of of painting the circles is to give visual cues to people. You know, we're, I'm, we're, it's not like we're going to have cops out there enforcing it. But you know, but but it's a good way to you know maybe just encourage good behavior. Um. I mean, I, I, they're going to do it anywhere. Let's be honest. So, but I'm glad they asked, right? Yeah. Um, anybody else have a problem with it? I know. Okay. I, I would recommend, uh, in lieu of just doing a formal resolution, since this is just a temporary use, I think this is this is ripe for someone just making a motion to approve uh, the use of the the grass for this area. This this area, we'll treat it like a resolution, but just move for approval of the mill to use it like this and, and uh, second, go through that process. Okay. Anybody wanna make the motion? I, uh, with respect to, to Dave's good opinions, I, I don't object to it. I will make uh, the motion that we approve uh, the use as proposed for a uh, temporary period of time. I, uh, McDevitt seconds that. Okay, all in favor? I'm Don Griffin, uh, yes. Cindy Canardi, yes. Eric Campos, yes. David Walter, no. Okay. All right. Uh, so we, we, um, motion carries. We, Add one um, no and the rest yes, uh, but the motion still carries. Uh, hey, thanks. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? I think that's it. That's it for officers and committees. Uh, think, uh, if you'd like to hear about the garages, I can give you a couple, a, a quick update. Did, did you want to get the latest status on those? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry about that. No, no, I just said it's, it's up to you. So, uh, you know, as you know, there's work being done on, on two garages right now. Um, that one is one is the Trades District garage and one is the Fourth Street garage. And the Trades District work is much more visible than the Fourth Street work right now. Uh, so what's happening at the Trades District is, you know, there's fast progress being made uh, with the site and the foundation and utility work. Um, there's going to be heavy equipment, cement trucks and cranes uh, active. Um, in the area, uh, so so we're going to actually be uh, closing off sections of 10th Street to facilitate that while maintaining security and safety for people. Um, and then um, the the city's also working on putting in a, a time lapse camera to to shoot the, the the development of the project as it as it progresses all the way through to completion. So that'll be great. Not 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 only as a kind of live webcam that people can check in on. Uh, but also it'll be a good, uh, you know, good packaging of the, the whole project for future use. Um, and right now it appears as if that project did need to be on time and on budget. Um, so that's good. In terms of 4th Street, so uh, bids have been received for the first bid package and the foundation piers, site work and elevators. And, um, you know, the city's construction management firm is uh, reviewing those bids for accuracy and, and um, hopefully they'll be ready for award uh, the next couple of days. The second big bid package uh, for structure and the rest of the garage construction has been released for bidding um, and we're you know waiting for all of that to uh, to come back and then uh, as with the trades district uh, we will be doing time-lapse photography for that project as well so as it as that activity starts, we'll, we'll have the same both real time and, and, and um, archival uh, time lapse photography of the project. So, Jeff, I don't know, is there anything else you want, want me to cover? Nope, that's it. Okay. All right. 
Any questions, folks, in regards to uh, anything that Alex has said in regards to the uh, the um, parking garage structures? So those are going to be live. That's going to be live feeds on, for the uh, parking garage that pe anybody can take that anybody can look at. That's right. As as uh, we're, uh, so, there, we're trying to Jeff. I don't know if they've picked a vendor yet for it, but I, my understanding is that that'll we'll have a some sort of live webcam kind of access that people can just click in on, right? Yeah, I believe it updates every so often. I think it. I, I I'm not sure it's exactly it's time lapse, but it's like every 15 minutes, I think for sure. But yeah, he's narrowed it down. We're trying to. Uh, uh, we've got a vendor. Uh, the options that uh, we had initially were for solar, and that that adds quite a bit to it. So we're trying to find uh, permanent power that we can um, go that route so it'll save us some money. And I think he's pretty close to making that decision. So we should get those cameras ordered and up soon. I mean, hmm. uh, ooh. Um, how can I say this? You know, uh, some people around town have had, they have video on their businesses and they catch things that they nobody really needs to see. And I'm wondering if that could be the same situation with our parking garage. So, so something that we think is gonna be cool could possibly be something that could be traumatic. Well, we certainly hope it's there, there's not, but I guess that's the other reason is from a safety perspective. If, some, if there's damage or equipment goes missing or there, you know, there's an accident of some kind, there's a video record of it that we can we can go to. You, you always take the chance, just like with Zoom meetings and everything else, that somebody's yeah. going to bomb it. But uh, I think but, the benefits outweigh the the. Um, but I, I think I'm saying I think it's a it's it's good to have it recorded, but it's not so good to let the public uh, for for us to anybody just to, you know what I mean, just to be able to see it without us uh, being able to weed through it. That's all I'm saying. Well, I'll offer up that Alex can uh, preview all the recordings and make sure nothing uh, undo unduly is uh, published. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I might I mention almost... that the university has been doing this on their major construction projects for the last five years. Okay. And if you wanted to, you can go to their website and look at uh, the North Housing under construction. Okay. And no problems with it. It's actually... Uh, good advertising to mm -hmm. go in there and watch the time lapses to, as it goes together. I think the new hospital is the same way. Okay. All right. I mean, it sounds cool. I just, just, uh, you know, because we're, uh, you know, you know, just being a little more careful with, uh, with, with what we as a city send out to the public. That's all. But yeah, I'm good with it. All right. Uh, any other questions, folks? All right, let's go to new business. Uh, the next item of business is resolution 20-29, amendment to the CDBG physical improvement funding agreement with the Bloomington Housing Authority. Who would like to speak in regards to this resolution? Hello? Uh, Matt Swinney here with hand. If there's any questions, I'm here to answer them. Okay. Uh, Matt, could you give us just a quick summary of what this resolution is <laughs> about? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, basically, due to the pandemic, the um, manufacturer of the stainless steel handrails uh, stopped production, which is going to put them uh, outside of their deadline to finish so we're just extending the deadline to give them plenty of time to get the handrails um, manufactured and delivered and installed okay. any other questions from matthew matt this is eric sandweiss is there any uh, consequence to uh residents um any inconvenience or worse that will take place over the the three months that uh you don't have the handrails available 
Uh, they'll install temporaries uh, until the time that they get the permanent ones in. So um, there'll be no safety concerns or anything like that. I don't think it'll take nearly that long. Um, but we figured we would plan for more time uh, instead of having to come back and do another extension. So, so I apologize. I had to leave my desk. Um, so Matt Sweeney is the new program manager for our physical improvement projects. So this is the first amendment he's had to take to the uh, redevelopment commission. But as Matt said, this is just providing the housing authority some additional time to complete the work um, under their funding agreement. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a motion? This is David Walter. I'll move that we accept this resolution. This is Nicholas Kappas, I second. All those in favor? I'm Don Griffin, I approve. Eric Sandweiss, yes. David Walter, approve. Nicholas Kappas, approve. Cindy? Can, is, Cindy, did you approve? Cindy? Okay, what happened? She's on mute. Cindy Canarney, approved. Okay, cool. All right. Um, uh, so all those in favor, um, we did that. Um, so motion is approved. All right. Uh, let's go to the next item of business. It's, res it's resolution 20 30. Uh, no excess value in the allocation area. Who uh, would love, like to speak in regards to this? I can, I can briefly speak to this if Jeff wants to jump in also. This is an annual requirement for the RDC. We have to give notice by June 15th, uh, whether there's any excess valuation of the property within the TIF districts. Um, as, as, uh, as was the case last year and the year before that, uh, there is no excess uh, valuation of any of the property in the allocation areas and therefore, uh, we will be sending out notice to that effect to the county and the required entities under Indiana law uh, as soon as this is approved. Okay. Any questions from any uh, commissioners? All right. All right. Can we have a motion? This is David Walter. This is I'll move Sandwich. that we accept resolution 20 30. Okay, that was David. And I say second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, Don Griffin, I approve. Cindy Canardi, yes. David Walter, yes. Nicholas Kappas, yes. Okay. Uh, uh all opposed none the motion carries that's it um okay uh do we have any general discussion or business none so uh we're gonna adjourn the meeting and don't forget we have a uh special meeting after this